Hi, Sculpture students. <clears throat> so some of you guys had reached out to me and said that either the video wasn't working or you couldn't find wire at home to do that part of the exercise. So I decided to kind of revamp <clears throat> the lesson that I was doing so that it maybe would be easier with some of the materials that you do at, have at home. So in, if you can do the wire thing, great. If you've already done it, awesome. You can still totally use that. Um, but if you can't access it or you don't have wire at home, another really great tool that you can use is aluminum foil. So if you have aluminum foil at home, then you can still make yourself an armature for your sculpture. So one of the lessons that we do, in case you couldn't see the video before, is a uh, figure um, sculpture. And the reason we do that is because we want to talk about human proportion. So there is an artist named Alberto Giacometti, and I'm going to link a couple of videos so that you can see some of his artwork along with this. And he um, focused on movement and humans and trying to put humans into some positions that uh, were far more interesting than somebody just standing there doing something. So when you create your sculpture, sorry, I apologize for the, I just got an email. Um, when you, and there's a work email <laughs> um when you um focus on that movement and try to create this sculpture of, of this person doing something you'll have the opportunity to add props and um possibly color uh giacometti did mostly metal sculptures so his were not colorful but you are welcome to add that to it <clears throat> and um sort of try to tell the story of what's happening with this person okay so when we're talking about basic human proportion, we're talking about adult proportion. And again, this is kind of a generalization. This doesn't fit for every person, but I would I think it's something like 87% of the population or something. This, this is a standard that is used, especially in the artistic world. So all the measurements of a body come off of the head. <clears throat> so however tall my head is here, that's how tall my body is going to, it's gonna determine how big my body is. So if you have a gigantic head, Generally speaking, you're going to have a bigger body. If you have a very tiny head, you're going to have a smaller body. Now, those are adult proportions. Your proportions are probably different. You are considered more of a teenager. So more than likely, um, your proportion would be a little bit different from what we are doing. Okay. So for basic human proportion, going off of that head, most humans most adult humans are eight heads tall. I'm gonna show you this handy little diagram that I have here. Normally, at the beginning of the class, I would give you a sketchbook and you would have one of these in there. But if you don't, you can at least reference back to this one. I'm sure that you can find diagrams online as well that will help you if, that, if you need that. Um, so here I have a head that is about the size of my thumb pad. That's kind of the size that I go off of just because I don't want this sculpture to be gigantic. Um, and then I have marked eight sections. So right at the bottom of the fourth section, halfway down the body is the hip. That's the halfway point of the body. So this distance matches this distance, okay? The knee is, we're at two and two here, okay? Just kind of a basic reference. The hips are about the same size as the shoulders. Um, <clears throat> now the arms, a lot of people end up doing the arms like way, way too long. Um, most people are actually rectangles, that if you put your arms straight out like this, from the tip of your middle finger to the tip of your middle finger, is the same distance from the top of your head to your feet. And a lot of people don't believe me on that. And since you're teenagers, the percentage of that happening is, is less. Um, but once you are a fully grown adult, um, it's astronomical. It's something like 96% are, are uh, squares. There are a few people that are rectangles where either their arms are too long for their body or too short for their body. Um, and that just happens. That's just a genetic thing. But it's some ridiculous amount of people are squares. So um, based off of that, from sternum, so from the spine to that tip of the middle finger would be the same distance as the top of the head to the hips. That doesn't mean your arms are going to be that two heads. It means it's gonna be two heads from here. Okay, so when we're measuring that out with our tin foil to make this, this armature, then um, you wanna consider that. 
as well. That the fact that you have this, this mass here that needs to be accounted for, okay? So I'm gonna start by just taking a piece of tin foil and I tend to work better with strips of tin foil. I don't like this large piece. So usually I'll break it into like thirds. So I have a section that's about this long and I'm just gonna kind of make a noodle out of it. And I'm not gonna squeeze it super tight yet. Um, I'm gonna start this by making kind of a roll. I'm gonna roll this up and try to get this to be the size head that I want. And I'm, I'm going to add more to this later. So you're not worrying about any sort of meat or muscle or anything like that. It's literally just a skeleton that you're creating with this. Okay, so you don't need to use a lot of it, but I'm gonna try to work off of my sketch here and I'm gonna try to create this person based off of that sketch. So I'm gonna squeeze this down. I'm gonna go down to the hips first. So I'm gonna take that measurement. Here's one, two, three, four. This is where my hips are gonna be, okay? So I'm gonna create the hip coming off of that. So I am not worrying at all about how fat this person is, okay? So the hips, when I do the hips, I want them to be about as thick as my thumb. Okay, that's kind of a good, for this size sculpture, that's a good measurement. I don't want to forget the hips because we have hips as people. And um, I, so I don't want to completely neglect the hips, but the bigger your hips, the bigger your booty. So I don't want this person with this gigantic booty coming at you. I want it to be relatively proportional. Now there are some people that their hips and their shoulders are not the same size. Swimmers tend to have um, broader shoulders and a smaller waist, so they have that triangular shaped body. Um, some people have the, the bigger hips and the smaller top, those pear shaped people. So there are people out there that, and if that's how you want your sculpture to be, more power to you. I'm all for that. Uh, but for the sake of my sculpture, I'm gonna just try to make it straight, human, basic proportion, kind of a generic person. Okay, so I bent the excess down here. I'm gonna start with another piece of my tin foil wire here. And then I'm going to, again, crumple that into kind of a loose noodle. And this distance right now is not quite as far as I need it. So I'm just going to connect these two together. I'm gonna get the length that I need. So here I have my, um, my distance from my head to my hip, and then I want from my head to my, or from my hip to my foot, and I do wanna make a foot there, okay? So this is kind of a basic foot. I just flattened it there, and then can just rip off that excess, okay? Then I'm going to connect it up here at the hip, just kind of wrap it around. And if you need to use a little bit of masking tape or something to connect it, that's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, but again, I wanna get that hip here. I'm gonna bring that down. I want this to match. So that's where my foot is gonna be. I can start kind of crumpling this to make it thinner. Rip off that excess again. So now I have the legs of my person and there is still room for improvement here. If your armature is really off, you'll have a problem. But if it's just, you know, a little bit that it could be adjusted by adding some meat, then um, that's a really easy fix. I'm just going to pop a quick piece of tape here just because it seems to be coming apart a little bit at the hip. Just for the time being, that will secure what I need it to secure. Okay. Oh, hold on, my kid's talking to me. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, okay, so I have my <clears throat> person with his legs. We're missing a very crucial part, which is the upper body. I'm going to take this last piece here and crumple that up. I'm gonna do this a little bit differently just because we do, you know, we have that sternum that we have to worry about and the hips, rather, I'm sorry, the shoulders, rather than um, 
connect it and work shoulder and then arm. All I'm gonna do is take this and twist it right about where I want my shoulders to be, okay? And that's gonna keep it nice and secure there. And then all I have to do is take that measurement here and measure where I want the hand to be done to finish up and tear off the excess. Okay, so here I'm gonna take that measurement again, go from the sternum to where the hand is gonna end, and I have my armature. Now this is going to be covered in something, so don't worry, this is not a finished product. But what I want you to do from here is think about the position that your person is gonna be in. So what is your person gonna be doing? I'm gonna have my person sitting on the floor. It's hard to do this up in the air. I'm gonna have him sitting kind of cross-legged, so I'm gonna bend him at the knee, making sure that his feet are pointed the right way and he's gonna be playing a ukulele. Now, when I bend for his arms, I need to account for those shoulders. Oh, lost a leg. Nothing to see, nothing to see. Everything's totally fine. Uh, so I have his legs crossed, and I'm gonna have him, I'm gonna just bend this down here while I'm, while I've got it down here, and I'll show you the finished product. But I'm bending at the elbow and at the shoulders, so you can see it looks like he'll be playing a ukulele, okay? So once you have this, set it aside, and then next week I'll show you the next video where we start adding some of the meat to it and start, a, start kind of making him more of a person. Now, if you want your person to stand up, that's totally okay. He will not stand on his own yet. We will work on trying to get him to stand up on his own in the course of the next few classes. Okay, so let me know if you have questions, send me pictures of what you're doing. I love to see it. Um, and I can offer you suggestions on, on things that you're missing. But at the end of this video, hopefully you will have some sort of person. If you did yours out of wire, again, that's totally fine. That's great. If you couldn't do it out of wire and you did it out of tinfoil, totally fine. Okay, all right. Nice seeing you. Thank you.